It's been a minute since we've talked about the Cosmic Rust desktop built by System76. I'm back today with a new release, Cosmic Alpha 6, big leaps forward, and there sure are. I wanna get into some of those big leaps today. As I have it installed here directly on my physical computer, so I'm running Cosmic in the background right now. I'm definitely excited to see some of these updates, including new accessibility updates, which seem to have been a focus here with the latest Alpha 6. Let's get right into the desktop here and talk about some of the new additions. One thing I wanna mention is make sure to stick around to the end because I wanna talk memory optimizations that have come with Alpha 6. Also, if you wanna make an update to your current Alpha setup, it's very easy to get to Alpha 6. I'm gonna show you how to do that here on the screen fairly easily. And once it's installed, you'll have these latest and greatest updates. The first one I wanna show you is if you right click and you go to display settings, one really cool thing that they've done is the new scaling feature. Now you can fractional scale between 25%, but you can also add an additional 5% increment. Meaning if I wanted to do 130%, I just put in 5% here extra for the additional scale options, which is fantastic because without this, I can't actually get things perfect to how I like them scaled. I actually like them scaled right around that 135%, something in between 125 and 150, which is fantastic as this gives you the ability to further fractional scale, giving you those small intervals in between the 25% steps. I really like this feature. I'm already using it. As you can tell, I'm up to 135 right now. One thing I will mention, maybe to make this a little better, instead of having two fields, maybe combine it down into one. And I'm not saying to have everything in a drop down by 5% increments. Instead, maybe you should be able to edit this percentage here and simply just put in some percentage and it takes you up or down to the nearest 5%. That'll condense the fields, but that's just my opinion on it. I'd love to hear from you and what you think on that. Anyways, this is a great feature to start things out. The new display settings for fractional scaling, they're improving it here as expected from System76 and their dev team really thinking about the user here. Another thing I want to talk about that's related is the zoom feature. We now have a zoom feature that allows you to zoom in really far. I kind of had it zoomed in a lot there, but we can zoom out by simply hitting the super key and then zooming out or in by using the mouse scroll wheel. It makes it super easy and you can tell here it looks really good as you can get really far in there without affecting the pixels and they still remain sharp. I mean, I'm at 545% and I really don't see the edging or clipping start occurring quite yet. So anyways, a very cool addition. You can either hit the plus or minus by just holding the super key after you've already used the mouse wheel. Not exactly sure what this currently does. I have it set to 200%. Maybe it's a work in progress or something. But anyways, it allows you to go between these settings. Maybe it's an additional thing on top of here. I'm not sure. Again, it just doesn't do anything from what I can tell at the moment anyway. But the few settings that you do have is you can have your view continuously move with the pointer as I have it right now. So as I'm going across the screen, it's following my cursor and getting me to different points of the screen. We can also set it to view moves when pointer reaches edge, view moves to keep pointer centered and other magnifier settings that we can set. One little bug that I did notice is when you're zooming out and you're between the 100 and 105% zoom, I can get it to mess up sometimes and create this jittery effect where I'm going kind of in and out by just scrolling backwards. Not sure how I get that to happen exactly, but it's been happening to me a few times now that I've been using the zoom magnifying feature. Another cool accessibility feature added to the Rust Cosmic desktop. Exciting to see this desktop zoom. Again, you just use the super and use the mouse scroll wheel in order to zoom in and out. You can also use super equals or super minus in order to zoom in and out if you need to do it from the keyboard instead. That zooms you in about, let's see here, 200% at a time. Very quick zooming if you need to do that as well. Hopefully you're not getting motion sickness. Speaking about accessibility tools, we are getting a screen reader finally, which if you click on the accessibility icon at login gives you an access to various settings and toggles for that. And a few others, including high contrast, color inversion, and various other color filters for the colorblind are being worked on. 
For those of us who want to modify or customize our desktop environment, we have a new option called desktop view. By right clicking and hitting desktop view options, you can now select how you want your desktop view to show up, including things like showing desktop folder content. One thing I absolutely love about the Cosmic Desktop is things just happen in real time. As I toggle this on, you can instantly see what's happening in the background. So do we wanna be able to see the mounted drives or the trash can icon? We can select whether or not we wanna do that. Also adjust the icon size directly in here. You can see how big they're getting over there or if I need them smaller. Right now I have it scaled, so I'm just gonna keep it around that 125, maybe 100% mark, doesn't really matter. We can also set the grid spacing now between the icons if you want them to show you know, further apart from each other, you can because you can set kind of the gap there. All these new settings can be toggled directly by right clicking again and hitting desktop view options. Love the fact that they've added this in just to be able to customize your screen a little bit more. And there's just so many ways to do that at the moment. One thing that was lacking is their workspaces as well. We can now scroll through the workspaces more easily. This wasn't working for me at all before. Now it seems to be working pretty well. And look at that, I can create new workspaces by just dragging stuff around. For example, I can throw that over. And now if I just click through, I have varying different workspaces that I can click on and look at these apps in. For example, I moved over my Cosmic Alpha 6 open browser page into Workspace 2, which created Workspace 3 for me. These automatically get added and subtracted as they move around. Notice if I'm moving them here, boom, Workspace 3 goes away. Now I have everything back on Workspace 1. Fantastic work there. Also, something that I kept mentioning is I couldn't get out of this view at all. So I have Workspace 2 select. I couldn't exit out of Workspaces. I don't even know if I was able to hit Workspaces above. It was a bit of a bug, but now if I click off of Workspaces, boom, I'm in the Workspace that I currently have selected. It's working well. I can confirm that's a bug fix that I've definitely been waiting on. So. Thanks to the System76 team for doing that. And also take a moment to subscribe below if you enjoy videos like this. YouTube can get finicky and you wouldn't wanna miss another video. Also smash that like button at this point to get more people interested in Linux and programming. We're gonna continue talking about workspaces as now previews for horizontal workspaces will show what's actually going on in that workspace. For example, the workspace preview on Workspace 2 doesn't have anything on the desktop right now, but I do have the Firefox browser on Workspace 1 and you can see it in the preview here. Additionally, minimize windows like I did a moment ago can be dragged and dropped between workspaces. That seems to be working well, although you don't really get a notification or kind of, you do get this little highlighting. I wish it was highlighted a little better so I can tell that it's about to go there. And when it does, I don't see the preview get updated quite well as I can see it here on the actual desktop workspace that we do have Cosmic Alpha 6 and the Firefox browser transported over to Workspace 2, but it still shows up in Workspace 1. Something with the rendering here needs to be refreshed, but overall, great, great improvements to the workspaces, making it much easier to work across these desktops. I'm loving what they're doing here. The next thing I I want to talk about is the launcher. If I hit the super key, that'll automatically bring up the launcher. And now I can search for various different things on the system. This is a fantastic way to search things on the system. It's one of my favorite tools available here. Well, with Pop OS, it's not a new feature here in the Cosmic Desktop, but it is something more unique to Pop OS. You can do math in here, which I'm a big fan of, and semi complex math as well by calling functions. The true reason this thing's a star is just how fast it gets you information back and how fast it renders what applications you're trying to look for. The improvement here that has been made is now that there are more options for you to select from, including a scroll which allows you to see additional options. If you go to the very bottom here, notice how the scroll works. Much better than before where you only saw eight entries. Now you see a lot more based on your search results. We've also seen other minor improvements to this launcher, but again, just the sheer speed of things. For example, if I was going to try to launch DaVinci, just see how fast that pulls up right in the menu. Love it. And I also like using Cosmic Files and it's received some updates as well. Hitting the down arrow while typing 
in a file path into the search bar will automatically finish the file path you are searching for. So for example, let's just see if we can do this. I start typing Savvy Nick, hit the down arrow, notice that it is automatically finishing that file path for me. I press enter and boom, I go to where I need to go. Let's try that again a different way. So again, I'm gonna edit the path. I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna type home, down, enter, boom, takes me to the next path. And if I wanted to keep going, I can as well. Boom, down, enter. And it takes me to the Savvy Nick home users directory. You can also now take files, right click, compress them with a protected password as well. Not gonna do that because I'm gonna lose my password and then totally forget how to open one of these video files up. Wouldn't wanna do that. Copy and pasting using the middle mouse button has been implemented for a sweet convenience. So I can middle mouse click there and then I can use the paste button as well. The Cosmic Media Player has also seen some updates. Let's see, I can't click applications. Let's try that again. Uh, here it is right here. So let's just check that out. File, open media. When a music file is opening, the media player will now display an image alongside a title, album, artist, and year released. So I don't really have any files I could bring up with right now. Let's try this one just to see kind of what happens. Eh. That doesn't seem to be working too well. All right, well, I guess I have no media that I can show you on that one. So I'm just gonna skip that one, but basically they've implemented some of the file menu options so you can finally use these things, including quit out of the application. Cosmic Edit allows you to revert changes now. So let's search for Edit, AKA. This allows you to go back to the most recent saved state. So if I had a whole bunch of stuff in here, and I've been doing a whole bunch of work and I wanna go back to my last save, I can hit the revert all changes button and that will take it to the last save state. So let's just give this a shot. I'm gonna type in Savvy Nick here. I'm gonna save this in documents somewhere. I'm just gonna call this test for now. And now that I have test, I'm going to exit out, close it, open it up through documents, test, hopefully edit, launches it, sure does. I'm gonna type in Savvy Nick again and then I'm gonna to go to file revert all changes, and boom, it goes back to the last saved state. So if you were doing a lot of work and you totally forgot what was going on and you don't want to do control Z a bunch of times, you can easily go back and revert it to the last saved state. Multiple tabs are available in here and you can now go through them by hitting control tab to easily access multiple documents. And they've also implemented a zoom feature where you can zoom in and out by just hitting control plus or minus in order to get in and see things a little better. There are other small updates to the app, but overall a great document viewer and editor. And a big thing you may or may not have noticed, the default font has changed here. From Fira Sans to Open Sans as the default font for Cosmic, the team seems to like Open Sans because it has better legibility, glyph and language support, and they claim a more modern aesthetic. And if you're using monospace font, Noto Sans Mono will be the default. Now I wanna hit up the bug fixes. Notice one thing that I like too here is if you just hit, let's say Firefox, which is on a different workspace now, it automatically takes you to that workspace and selects it for you. I do like how they've done that. We're gonna go down to the bottom here and talk about some of the bug fixes before we get to some of the exciting resource optimizations that have occurred with Alpha 6. A swarm of new bug fixes, fixed a bug causing workspace previews to disappear, fixed an issue with refresh rates not applying, fixed a bug with server side decorations that caused the cursor to drag a window after a single click, patched the WGPU memory error related to drag and drop. When clicking on an app icon of an app with multiple windows open, Windows previews now adapts to the size and shape of the window, implemented a fix to the Cosmic Compositor related to keyboard grabbing after a window is focused, got the compositor to play nice with KVM switches, added an empty state for design on the Cosmic Media Player with no media is playing, fixed a crashing issue in Cosmic Files, implemented behavior to Cosmic Files for exiting the context menu, and many, many, many more bug fixes for Alpha 6. They also have a new image for Alpha 6. If you want to check that out, you can head to the Cosmic page for a fresh install of Alpha 6. It includes an NVIDIA supported ISO as well as an AMD supported ISO as well. So you can download that right away and get on top of Alpha 6 right now. 
You can also try out the Rust Cosmic Desktop on Fedora, NixOS, Arch, OpenSUSE, Serpent OS, now known as Aaron OS, Redox, and Catchy. So no matter what you're on, you can pretty much try it out. They're pretty good. I've tried it out on Fedora and on Arch Linux. Seems to be working pretty well. They get ported pretty quick, so I wouldn't be surprised if Alpha 6 is available on some of them already. And now with the complete refresh, I've only been up for about a minute. We can see that there's 2.2 gigs out of 32 gigs being used with HTOP, but this is actually way down because I have OBS running right now in the background. It was at 1.6 when I first loaded the system, which is a significant reduction in how much memory has been used in the past because it was around that 2.2, maybe even four gig mark before they are making optimizations to this full-fledged modern desktop environment, which is fantastic to see. The memory usage has been greatly reduced in a number of areas, including the minimized cosmic files and workspaces, and a related update made to libcosmic should prevent memory fragmentation. That's all from the blog post, which is fantastic as they are optimizing things here on the environment, and a lot of people have been asking for that as well. If we run NeoFetch, we can see that this is 24 0.04 LTS running the 6.12 kernel, only been up for a minute. For those of you worried about packages, it has 1,857 source packages installed and 15 flat packs. That's because of me. We're running this on an Intel i5 7500 four core processor on an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1660 Super. Again, using 2.3 out of 32 gigs. And when I first started the system, this was at 1.6 gigs. I can say it's probably better than GNOME at this point when it comes to resource usage, and I suspect that this is only going to get better. As a System76 team is dedicated to making our desktop experience not only modern, but optimized as well, I really appreciate the amount of effort that's been going into this desktop environment, and it really shows between the last two alphas, Alpha 5 and Alpha 6. Another significant reduction was in the CPU cycles that are used by the Cosmic Desktop environment, but I don't really know how to show you that at the moment without maybe rendering something intensive. I'm not sure what I could do there, but we'll have to trust the devs on that one. Anyways, I'm excited to keep using the Cosmic Rust Desktop. Let me know what you're thinking about everything in the comments section below. Are you excited to use the latest and greatest alpha version? Hopefully we get a beta before long. Let's hope for an early April release. I have no idea when it's actually gonna happen but I'm excited to try it out either way. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like button below. Also, subscribe, you made it to the end, you're a true fan anyway, might as well follow along with new videos. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to SavvyNick.com now and get access to these sheets.